Hey, what's happening? Barnaby here, hanging out with Chef Jeff of the <laughs> Chef Jeff Project. How you doing, man? Fine, sir. How are you? What's happening? I'm doing real well. Now, the reason I'm talking to you is because we're here at the Amway Grand Plaza. They've got a big jail and prison food service seminar going on, yes. which I find to be so interesting because I've always wondered, what do they serve in jail and or prison? And we're going to get to that in just a second. But right now, let's talk about your TV show. What is the premise of the Chef Jeff Project? Well, the Chef Jeff Project is a re docu-reality series on the Food Network where I take six at-risk young people from diverse backgrounds and put them through a 28-day culinary and life skill boot camp. I try to use the power of food to impact and change their life in the way they see themselves, and hopefully they can become productive citizens in society. Well, I'll tell you what, I've had some experience with Angus Campbell, who's a penultimate chef here in Grand Rapids, and he runs a kitchen like a drill sergeant, and you can see everybody just falling into line saying, you're the chief, we're the soldiers, and as a team, we're going to produce a great product. Is that kind of the premise of the show, is that you learn your place and you learn to contribute as a member of a team? Absolutely. You learn, you learn teamwork, communication, you learn how to execute an event, you also learn to become a brand, become part of the business. And I wanted to take young people and incorporate life skills into cooking as well. So they actually learn how to run a business, they learn how to cook, how to prepare for a party, how to communicate with guests, but they also learn how to get along, the importance of pulling your pants up, the importance of you know your self uh, presentation like presentation of the food how do you come to work how you conduct yourself being to work on time first day and last hour the whole gamut of the social skills needed to penetrate corporate America and it's also very interesting isn't it? you probably think now there's a well-educated slick dude how does he know how to interface with people who have been through the system well truth be told you spend a little time in prison up to 10 years in, in federal prison. Uh, highly educated, no, street educated, absolutely. PhD in streetology. And, <laughs> and, and hard knocks and hard life uh, is how I self-educated myself, what I, which I call reality-based education. And I think before you can um, empower a young person to embrace the college culture, they need to embrace reality-based education. You know, being responsible, accepting responsibility, making the right choices in life, and understanding the consequences that come from making wrong choices. And you, while you were in prison, learned how to cook and then came out and now you're a chef of great renown. I mean, you were the executive chef at Bellagio in Vegas. Uh, actually, Cafe Bellagio, which is a $30 million a year restaurant that operates within the whole Bellagio Hotel. Uh, you know, I found my, my hidden passion, uh, my calling for cooking in prison. You know, I was a chief inmate cook and baker at several federal institutions and I, I, I had a dream. I said, you know, I think I can do this on the outside. And when I was released from prison, I started out washing dishes in Beverly Hills and working my way up to becoming the first African American uh, executive chef to run a restaurant at the Bellagio uh, in Las Vegas. That is crazy and here's a fun fact to know and tell and that is that when you go out to dinner chances are a former inmate has probably had a hand in preparing your food. Would you say that's correct? Absolutely. Uh, for some reason there is a, a huge connection between the food service industry and formerly incarcerated individuals and why I really don't know but when you look at hiring a person who's been incarcerated in a kitchen uh, they're not dealing with money. They're not dealing with the public. You come in through the back door and normally your, wash, your pot and pan station is right there. So, and plus you get a free meal. And uh, it's a place that where they discipline is fostered in a kitchen. And when coming from a prison setting, uh, you're, you're very disciplined. You're coming from a regiment uh, type situation as well. Okay, well, let's get to the subject of what people eat in jail and or prison. Because I remember in Vermont, remember that story where they said, feed them sawdust meatloaf. They don't deserve good food. Good food is essential for anybody's nutrition and also just sense of well-being. So average day, what would an inmate be eating? Well, absolutely. I well, I think, you know, people who look at it like that, you know, that one of the, the biggest ways to control an inmate population is through the food. So if you treat them garbage, feed them garbage, you're going to get garbage, and which creates a, a dangerous, a, a hostile uh, type situation in the prison system. I think uh, inmates in prison, you know, yes, we we have done wrong things uh, that put us there. Do we deserve to eat filet mignon or Kobe beef? Absolutely not, but we do deserve to eat something that is nutrition, that's going to keep us healthy in prison, which cuts the cost for medical care for the government. So, you know, there's a plus there as well, too. But I, I don't think uh, we should have a meatloaf that's uh, not up to standard. So average day, you wake up, scrambled eggs, maybe some toast? Yeah, you know, some place is different. You know, some places, you know, you may get powdered eggs, you know, versus real cracked, fresh cracked eggs. You know, grits, oatmeal is a daily routine in prison. Maybe some toast minus the butter. You know, cold sandwiches for lunch. Uh, dinner, you know, you usually get a pretty decent piece of protein uh, with vegetables. Uh, and if you choose not to eat what's in the prison uh, dining hall, you have the right to eat what you uh, purchase from the inmate commissary, which could be canned tuna, canned chicken. Uh, you make nachos, uh, eat them with some chips and dip and things like that. 
Okay, now here's a question that we've bandied about on Barty Main Friends quite a bit, and that is, if a person does their time, should they be just reassimilated by society or should that always hang over their head? Case in point, Michael Vick. I'm of the mind that he did his 18 months, he's admitted the wrong, and yet there are so many people out there that say he should never play football again. Well, I think that, you know, America uh, is built on the basis of second chances, and for the people to criticize individuals who made wrong choices and went to prison, shame on them, because everyone, I believe, has done something they're not proud of in life. And probably a majority of Americans have committed an arrestable crime at some point in their life. You know, no one's perfect. We all make mistakes. You know, you pay your to society by serving your time you should come out and have every opportunity to live the american dream like anybody else thanks man My you're pleasure. an inspiration i yes, really sir. appreciate it thank you sir okay